broken the ancient commandments and crafted a bond with one of the light. Our laws are clear. They demand you be eternally imprisoned. As for the impure child, she must be kept from the path of the dark arts forever. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to embark on a truly epic quest. Uh, this is Bayonetta on the Wii U. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, I don't have... okay. Uh, but I've only played it on the 360. So... Bear with me for a while. This might not be high-level Evo play. Uh, cause... Yeah, I'm using the, the Wii gamepad. I'm not doing that touchscreen nonsense. But yeah, I figure, you know what? It's a new year. This game is awesome. And now it's finally relevant again, cause Bayo's gonna be in Smash! And this opening sequence, which is truly freaking fantastic, is going to be a stage. Long since erased from the records of time, there once existed two European clans who served as overseers of history for the powers that be. The Umbra Witches, dwellers of the darkness, and the Lumen Sages, controllers of the light. The clans paid each other great respect, and their efforts to maintain the balance between them defended the just passage of time. Yet one day, that balance was toppled. harmonious clans fell into disagreement and stoked the flames of hatred against each other, resulting in an era of strife. The conflict between the Umbra and the Lumen threw all of Europe into a chaotic loop of battle, ambush, assassination, and casualty. It was truly a gruesome war. Despite the tremendous radiance of God shining upon them, the Lumen Sages were gradually weakened by the assault of the secretive Dark Witches. Years after the balance was lost, the war had ended in the Umbra Witches. Further, and soon the Umbra witches, keepers of the darkness, 
were extinguished from the earth. All but one. Okay, um, so I didn't want to talk through that because that hope that opening sequence is basically like you have two choices: either pay attention to the gameplay or ta pay attention to the story. It's damn near impossible to do both on your first try. Uh, this game's story is really hard to follow the first time, so I'm gonna stick to what I usually do and not talk during the cutscenes, or at least I'm going to try not to. Just so you guys can kind of, kind of at least attempt to understand it. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty chill LP. I forgot about that. Yeah, so because this um also just right off the bat, well, off first off, let me save. Um yeah. Uh so right off the bat, you get um a bunch of Nintendo themed costumes. Um I might check these out later on. Uh for the most part, they're cosmetic, although they do change a bunch of assets in the game, too. Um, like, for example, if you choose a Link, or excuse me, the quote-unquote Hero of Hyrule uh, costume, it changes all the collectibles into uh, different colored rupees. So, we're not going to look at that right now. We might later on, though. as we travel through the ether. Oh, I know this goes back on my, um... Yeah! God, I love that logo. I know this goes back on what I just said about not talking about cuts uh, through cutscenes, but there are a few Easter eggs in the graveyard. If I catch them, I'll point them out. And a lot of them are kind of a uh, whoop! Hit the mic. A lot of them are legacy based, um, and have to deal with like some of the developers and like past projects that they worked on. Taking his last fall. Even all Eggman the Destroyer gets scrambled in the end, right? For example, this being published by Sega, you know, uh, Eggman the I Destroyer is reference to Dr. Eggman. Some of you might know Dr. Robotnik. Hey, bet you can't guess what today is. Reading the good Lord's book ain't gonna do much. People have been waiting for this asshole to get whacked for ages. Please. Hell, look around! There's no love lost for old Humpty Dumpty. But you gotta keep the outfit happy. We don't take care of him, they take care of us. And I prefer my shoes made out of rubber, not concrete. But hey, it's that kind of town. Without good-hearted souls like us to put these bastards six feet under, where'd society be? Of course, the pay's not bad either. 
Jesus, you really get into this shit, don't you? If it were me, I'd be praying he ends up barbecue. Or at least sunny side up. <laughs> You can keep praying, but the only way this guy's meeting the Lord is if God's hungry for breakfast. <laughs> Speaking of hungry, we done here. My kids are baking me a birthday cake tonight. Cute little fuckers, I tell you what. Well then, adios. I see them. They are instruments of God, descending upon his heavenly rays to earth. Oh, my God! Dear Lord, grant us guidance, and keep safe the souls of our loved ones for all eternity. Next time you want me hands on you, you better make sure I'm dead. Now move out the way. Uh, you have to understand, Rudon is probably the coolest character in the game. And I'm gonna have to go back in that hole chasing after the money you want. He should have his own spin-off game too. Platinum, get on that. Oh, that that was the uh, director Hideki Kamiya tombstone. If you caught that.
Yeah, throw it anyway. Uh, Joe, red hot. Uh, if you caught that, that's a reference to Beautiful Joe. Another game that uh, some of these developers worked on, I know uh, Hideki Kamiya was part of it, <clears throat> was a uh, part of it. Also debuted as a Nintendo exclusive on GameCube. Debuted as... didn't stay that way. Alright, so now that we're in gameplay... Uh, nope, we ain't doing that. <laughs>